All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back. This is the video for activity sheet one, which we'll be doing on Wednesday. That will be Wednesday, September 9th. Um, so I'm trying a new recording software uh, through just through the website explain everything. We're going to see if this is a little smoother as far as the recording goes. Um, now, the pre-lesson for today, so the stuff that we want to watch in this video and talk about in this video to get ready for Wednesday's class, is about a new integration technique called integration by substitution. It's possible that you saw this at the very tail end of your Calculus 1 experience. It's possible that you didn't. Either way, that's A-OK. -okay. We're going to be covering it from the ground up here. Uh, the idea here is that this is going to be the first of many more advanced integration techniques that we will be using and learning so that we can integrate more challenging equations, more challenging functions. Uh, and th this technique can be thought of as the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sort of blanking on the phrase I wanted to use here. Uh, it can be thought of as a version of undoing the chain rule, right? So let's remember, let's start by remembering what the chain rule is. So the chain rule is exactly this, uh, expression that's written right here. It says that if we are taking the derivative of a function that is a composition, so if we have two functions, uh, f and u, we create a composition function f of u of x, right? And that's exactly what we have in here. This is f of u, the composition function. Then the derivative of that is f prime of u times u prime. Right? And that is our good old friend, the chain rule. Now, the rule that we're going to uncover here is that this actually leads to a integration rule as well. Specifically, if I ever see an integral of an expression that looks like f prime of u of x times u prime of x, so if I'm ever trying to integrate something like this, that will just become f of u, right? Because by the fundamental theorem, uh, our integration will simply undo the differentiation that we saw previously. Should probably throw a plus c there as well. OK, great. So to see this in action, right? let's scroll down. Uh, if we were asked to calculate the derivative of e to the 3x, uh, we can note that this is a composition function, right? We can think of this as f equals e to the x, and then u, the inside function, is equal to 3x. And so therefore, this becomes f of 3x, aka f of u of x. So e to the 3x can be thought of as a composition function in this way. And therefore, when it comes time to take its derivative, we can say that the derivative of e to the 3x by the chain rule will equal, uh, again, we'll take the derivative of f, so that's just e to the 3x times the derivative of 3x, which is just 3. So we see that the derivative of this function by the chain rule is equal exactly to this. Now, using this, uh, I'll start up at the top, using this observation, we can immediately integrate the integral uh, 3e to the 3x by recognizing that it is the end result of a chain rule derivative, right? In other words, what we have here that we're trying to integrate is exactly what we got here as our answer to our differentiation problem. So immediately, without any thought, we can say, oh, uh, there was a composition here. We had e to the 3x as our uh, composition. And so the antiderivative of 3e e to the 3x is just e to the 3x, like this. <clears throat> uh, again, plus c. Uh, and we can do a similar thing down here in problems 3 and 4. Uh, I will quickly point out that if we take the derivative of g here, the chain rule says that g prime should equal 4 times 2 minus 7x to the third. 
times the derivative of uh, 2 minus 7x, so that will become 0 minus 7. Uh, and this whole thing simplifies down. Notice the 4 and the negative 7 can be multiplied together. This becomes negative 28 uh, times 2 minus 7x to the third. And so because of that, down here, we see that we're exactly trying to integrate negative 28 times 2 minus 7x to the third. We know immediately that this should become uh, 2 minus 7x to the fourth plus c. So the process of what will be called substitution, integration by substitution, will come from looking at a function like this or an integral problem like this and trying to identify that it was originally the end, or that it is the end result of a derivative on what was originally a composition of functions. And that means sort of identifying what the outside function f is and identifying what the inside function u is. And this is sometimes called u substitution because the uh, technique that we'll explore comes from identifying that inside function u first and foremost. So we're trying to figure out what those are. Uh, notice in this composition, let's go back up to problem three, the inside function, the u, was the 2 minus 7x. And then what we can see down here in problem four is that there is still that 2 minus 7x, that inside u piece floating around. So that was our u from the previous problem. So a lot of the technique in u substitution comes from looking at an integral problem and trying to identify what this, you know, quote unquote, inside piece u is equal to. All right, let's keep going. <clears throat> okay, so there's a little bit of a wall of text here, um, which I'll, I'll try to summarize and which you're welcome to, to read on the activity sheet or read uh, on the video on your own. Um, let's take a look at a problem like this one here, the five times cosine of five X plus one. We want to hypothesize that this might be a integral that can be computed by substitution. And that means that it is the end result of a chain rule derivative problem, which means looking at this, that we want to figure out what an inside function uh, U could possibly be. So we want to begin by finding an inside function and declaring that to u. Now, just like before up above, I'm going to literally look inside the integral and try to identify a piece that might make a good candidate u. And here we see a set of parentheses, and inside those parentheses is 5x plus 1. So that could be a good candidate for u. And we can literally say, let's assign u to equal 5x plus 1. Now, if we scroll way back, uh, let's not scroll up. Let's just recall that the derivative of f of u of x was equal to f prime of u times u prime. And what that meant was that the integral of f prime of u of x times the u prime of x, right? That would equal f of u plus c. So uh, coming back down to this problem here, we've identified a potential candidate for our expression u. What we then typically do, once we've made a hypothesis for what we think u might be, we will go and try to see whether that u prime, right? So there's the u prime up here, actually appears in our integral. And so down here, maybe I should say, here is our u. Down here is our u. And the question is, does u prime also appear in this integral? Well, off to the side, we will often compute the derivative of u. So we'll compute u prime, and that's equal to five. Uh, and indeed, oh, look. Look, look, look. So we can see here that that u prime does appear in the problem. Uh, it's floating out front, but that is okay. So we can begin to identify 
the different pieces of this composition. Um, so let's rewrite this in terms of du. And we're going to uh, use a little trick here. What we'll often do, I'll, I'll sort of write this in maybe green off to the side. So we have u prime equals five and we identified the five. What we often do is we write not just u prime equals five, but we write du dx equals five. And then we write this expression involving the differential expressions. So du equals five dx. And then what we can see is that it's not just this five out front, but it is this five dx taken together. So we'll take those together and we'll turn them both into the expression du. Um, so coming down here, we have our original integral. That's this first piece. This 5x plus 1, that was what we called a u. And then the 5dx is what we called our du. And so we end up with this integral. We have the integral of cosine of u du. And this is an integral, right, that just looks like a slightly more standard, simple integral. It's simply using the variable u instead of the variable x. So this turns out to be an integral that we can calculate directly. Uh, the cosine, the antiderivative of the cosine function is the sine function. And so we end up getting this expression here, uh, sine of u plus c. And then because u is equal to 5x plus 1, we get sine of 5x plus 1 uh, plus c as our answer. And so this, in fact, maybe I'll box it in blue, uh, this is the antiderivative of what we originally had up here. Now, we can always check that by computing a derivative off to the side, right? So our derivative will be derivative of our answer, sine of 5x plus 1. Uh, whoops, sorry, 5x plus 1. And that derivative will equal, um, well, again, to take the derivative, we need to use the chain rule. So the derivative of sine is cosine. We get cosine of 5x plus 1 times the derivative of 5x plus 1. That's just 5. And notice what we get as our answer is exactly what we started with up here. So we are good to go. Now, u substitution is the first new integration technique that we learn. And as a result, because it's so new, it looks initially a little intimidating. So I recommend the following steps. Uh, number one, just start with a guess, right? So number one, uh, guess a potential u. Number two, uh, calculate, calculate, uh, the corresponding expression for du, as we did above. And then number three, go ahead and substitute in and see what happens. So in this next example, let's scroll down. Uh, we'll just try this next integral here, and then we'll end the video. Uh, in this example, we see there are some expressions. There's an exponential expression here. There's some trig expressions involving the sine function and the cosine function. And so we can try to guess what we think a good choice of u might be. Um, and we might notice, because last time we talked about looking for inside functions, we might notice that there's two potential inside functions here. There's this negative sine of x, which is inside parentheses. Uh, and then there is also cosine of x, which is inside the exponent. Um, and so we can guess either of these as a potential u. Uh, it turns out that the correct guess, um, and we can talk in class about what would happen if we guess the other way, but it turns out that a correct guess for us would be u equals cosine. So that's going to be our inside function for the original composition. Uh, what that means then is that the derivative of u, so du dx, 
the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And therefore, if I write this in terms of du, we see du equals negative sine of x dx. And so we've got all these pieces now, uh, as far as the u, right? We've got that up here. And then as far as the negative sine of x dx, well, that will nicely combine to create a du. So the entire thing can now be rewritten, right, as the integral of e to the u du. And you can see that we've simplified this down. We now have an expression that we know how to compute. The antiderivative of the exponential function is just the exponential function again, plus c. And so that becomes e to the cosine of x plus c. Uh, and there we go. So like all of these uh, integration techniques, this will become easier with practice. Uh, and we will get some opportunities in class to practice exactly this. That's all I've got for now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.